Fasten your seatbelts from Alibaba Security Lab for, it looks like their talk is about escaping iOS 11 sandbox. Give them a round of applause. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Today we are going to talk about the security of iOS 11 sandbox. And this talk will be presented by my friend, Min Spark Zheng, and me. Uh, we are from Alibaba Security. Uh, firstly, let, let's have a look at the uh, uh, iOS system. Uh, there are three levels in iOS system. Uh, the first level is sandbox applications. Uh, there are quite a few attack surfaces to uh, the kernel in applications. Uh, and the second level is user land system services, including some uh, services called Mac services. Uh, in these system services, we can have more attack surfaces to the kernel. And the third level is the kernel. Uh, so in iOS, every application is sandboxed. Uh, this sandbox was first, first in introduced as Cbelt in macOS. Uh, and uh, uh, in, uh, now, uh, mm, there are over 100 operations uh, that are hooked by uh, sandbox policies. Uh, these sandbox policies were, uh, were first uh, uh, blacklist and now they are whitelisted now. Uh, with, uh, with this table, uh, this table is uh, uh, from the OS internals. Uh, with this table, we can know that there are over uh, 100 uh, uh, sandbox hooks in iOS 11. Uh, and uh, there is a, a concept called uh, sandbox profiles. Uh, sandbox profiles define what uh, Mac services can be accessed by, uh, uh, by sandbox applications. In macOS, these profiles are visible and stored in system library sandbox profile this file. Uh, and in iOS, uh, the profiles were hard coded and difficult to be decoded. Um, but we can traverse all Mac services to get uh, the list of services that uh, can be uh, accessed uh, by sandbox applications. Uh, also, we can use uh, some tool, for example, the SB tool developed by Jonathan. Uh, in order to find vulnerabilities in a Mac service, we need to uh, disassemble and uh, analyze the binary that handles the uh, uh, Mac service. Uh, uh, there uh, there is a directory called system library launch daemons, uh, which contains uh, the configuration plist files of most Mac services. From these plist files, we can know uh, the path to uh, Mac services uh, binaries. And next, uh, Spark will uh, give more details about uh, the vulnerabilities we found in iOS 11 sandbox. Thank you. Thanks, Xiaolong. <coughs> Okay, so there are a rich set of IPC mechanisms in iOS, and most of them are available to third-party applications. In this talk, we will focus on Mac service. Um, Mac messages are most common used IPC mechanism in XNU. In addition, Mac messages contains typed data, which can include port rights and reference to a large range of memory. Based on Mac message, Apple developed XPC. Compared with raw Mac message, XPC is safer and easier to be used. But the cost of XPC service maintaining is very high. NSXPC message is built on top of XPC message, which allow abstraction of XPC connections and remote objects. Through Mac, uh, through Mac message, sandbox app can communicate with uh, Mac, Mac services, XPC services, and NSXPC services. Consequently, if the server doesn't, uh, doesn't don't handle the message in expected ways, uh, they may be corrupted by malicious apps. So in this talk, I will share three old bugs today. The first, the first bug exists in the GitKeeper XPC service. Uh, the related binary is reserved. Uh, the service receives uh, two parameters. One is test sub, uh, sub di dictionary, and the uh, uh, second one is source pass. Um, but it doesn't check the validity of the past dream. Therefore, if the attacker can use a pass uh, traversal vulnerability to 
achieve an arbitrary file move outside the sandbox with, uh, with mobile privilege. Uh, this bug was used in Pangu 9 for jailbreak. So the second vulnerability is in uh, Media Library D, NSXPC. Uh, it can be exploited to read, write, and query uh, arbitrary circulate files outside the sandbox. Since the remote object of the service have mobile privilege and it does not check uh, the input path of the circulate file, an attacker can achieve uh, an arbitrary query in the, uh, of the files on the system. Uh, the attacker can use begin transition for database at path to connect an arbitrary uh, files, uh, arbitrary circulate files on the system, and then use execute query to execute circle commands uh, on it. For example, a malicious app can leverage this vulnerability to modify uh, SMS messages or emails on the device. Uh, in addition, it has another vulnerability. Uh, because it uses Circulite 3. Uh, the Circulite 3 has a feature that called FTS3 tokenizer. Uh, it is used for built in full text search. Developer can uh, use commands to get or set tokenizer. However, uh, attackers can leverage this feature to link memory information and even execute arbitrary code. For example, the first commander, commander can help us link the address of the default tokenizer, which can help us to uh, bypass ASLR. Uh, in addition, attacker can register a new tokenizer and uh, trigger the callbacks using the following commands. Uh, the, the second commands. Because the call, callback address is set by us and uh, the process doesn't check it, so it's possible for us to hijack the PC register and control the NSXPC service as we want. Uh, this vulnerability was used in our private jailbreak. So uh, here is the third, uh, third bug. The, uh, th this bug exists in the Bluetooth D Mac, Mac service. There are 132 uh, functions in the COM Apple service Bluetooth D Mac service. Bluetooth D communicate with other sandbox apps and uh, on sandbox the processes, for example, springboard through COM Apple service Bluetooth D. A process can use BT session attached to create a session token for the Bluetooth D and then use uh, BT. BT local device add callbacks to register a callback for event notification. However, it has a vulnerability which are found by Rene. Uh, he found that the Bluetooth D only use the session token to identify the process, which means uh, we can use a sandbox app to hijack a communication between Bluetooth D and unsandboxed uh, processes through the session token. Uh, the key problem is the session token is too easy to be brute forced. It only have uh, one zero 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 possible uh, values. Therefore, the, uh, therefore, Apple fixed this problem by adding a user ID uh, to each session, which is a random number. And uh, only the process and the Bluetooth D know the user ID, and the Bluetooth D will check the map uh, of as a uh, SES token with the user ID in the uh, add callbacks. So as we mentioned before, a user ID is a very, very large random number. So if, uh, if we know the session token, we can still try to hijack the communication through user ID brute force. But uh, when I try it, I found it will take a very, very long time, about 12 hours. So I don't think this is a good bug. So uh, what if we can find some other functions without a user ID verification? Yes, I found one. Uh, this, this function is called BT Accessory Manager add, add callbacks. However, after, after sending messages to that function, nothing happened. Uh, what's wrong? Finally, I found the problem, the callback event can be triggered only when the iOS device connects to a new device 
which means we need to trigger the callback by click the Bluetooth steam manually. This is not a good bug because we need to do something on the device uh, manually. So the first bug takes a very, very long time. The second bug is very hard to trigger. Can we find the third bug to, 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 uh, to get uh, callbacks and uh, easy to trigger? Finally, finally, I found it. Uh, this, this one is called BT Discovery Agent Create. We can use it to create a callback for the discovery agent. Then we can use BT Discovery Agent Start Scan to trigger the callback without manual click. So uh, we find a very good bug. But uh, the, goal for, uh, the goal is not only control the PC register, but the process as well. So the next step is to create a rope chain and do a hip, hip spray for the target process. In this case, uh, we use complex mark message with OL descriptor memories. Uh, th this is a very useful uh, mark, mark message because if we send the, the message uh, to the process and don't receive it, the message will stay in the targeter's memory space persistently. Then we can use a magic address uh, for example, uh, in, in this case, it's 1054000 to set this callback address, and the PC can jump to this address. It will uh, point to a rope chain. So after we trigger the vulnerability, we can control the following registers. And the last BR is X4. So now we can do BOP or GOP. Uh, but it's hard for us to control the whole pro uh, program flow because we need a stack pivot to control the stack and change the BOP to ROP. So a good uh, stack pivot gadget can be found in the system platform, DYLib. Uh, this gadget is very useful. If we can control X0, we can control SP. Uh, after that, we can do real rope. Uh, by using rope, we can steal files or open a sandbox to uh, allocate user client. Uh, but rope is not elegant. We want the task port to control everything. So what is task port? Uh, let me briefly introduce what is port. A port in XNU provides an endpoint for IPC. Uh, messages can be sent to a port or received from it. Ports can contain writes, and the port writes can be passed in message. The most important port for the process is the task port, uh, which can be get from mark task self. Uh, one can control the memory or all the registers for the process through its task port. Uh, this, this port is very useful. For example, we can use Mark VM alloc to alloc memories in a remote process through the task port, and a mark VM write to copy data into a remote, a remote process, and a thread create running to create a new thread and control registers in a remote process. So if we can get the task port, we can control everything of the process. OK. So let's try to get the task port of a, a remote process. Here is the steps. First, we ask uh, LaunchD to get the port, port name of Bluetooth D. Then we send a lot of ports with the PON apps send write to the Bluetooth D and send ropes through HIPS3. After that, we trigger the vulnerability to control the PC of Bluetooth D. After that, we use the rope chain to send mark messages, which contains the task port of Bluetooth D back to our Pong app. After that, we can use the target process. Uh, we can control the whole target process through its task port. Uh, there are some tricks learned from March Portal. Uh, which are developed by Beer. Uh, we can use insert write to insert a send write to the port, and the port can be sent by OL messages with port description. In most cases, uh, the mark the mark, mark task self returns 103, so when, so we can just use 103 without loop to call the mark task self. Uh, in order to get the task port back to our Pong app, 
we need to know the port number of our Python app. However, we can't use LaunchD to help us. So we, so that's why we send a lot of ports because it can be brute, brute forced. So we send a lot of ports to the remote server and to, uh, in order to increase the successful rate. Uh, after that, we can try to re remotely malloc uh, malloc some memories in the target process or just uh, execute some functions in the target process. Uh, however, iOS 11 uh, add a new mitigation that uh, we, uh, we cannot easily use the task port in the user land. So uh, there are, uh, but uh, we, we have a plan B that the ropes always work in the user mode. So we can use a generic uh, pr primitive for the function calls with arbitrary parameters in the core foundation. Uh, this gadget is very useful because we can have unlimited parameters uh, and then call uh, x, x8 and uh, la last return to uh, the program. Uh, by using the uh, Bluetooth D vulnerability, we successfully uh, exploit the iOS kernel through a sandbox IO kit user client and break kernel slide, and then gain the kernel read and write ability on the iOS 11. Also, we, uh, we got a root shell and a jailbreak on the uh, iOS 11. So uh, here is the conclusion. First, we introduce the basic concept of iOS sandbox and summarize several classic ways to escape the iOS sandbox. Uh, based on uh, old Bluetooth D vulnerability, we found two new zero day sandbox escape vulnerabilities on the latest iOS, iOS version. And we present a classic way to do hip three, stack pivot, and rope in iOS user land. Then we show how to get and control the task port of the remote process during the, the exploit. Uh, during the exploit. Uh, there is an update. Uh, after we uh, submit our talk to DEF CON, uh, we, uh, we also report these two, uh, two zero day bugs to Apple on July 7th. Um, Apple fixed them in the latest uh, iOS uh, and uh, as well as iOS 12 beta with CVEs. So please update your uh, device to the latest version in order to defend against the potential task, uh, potential attacks. Uh, so here is some reference for this talk. Uh, okay, that, that's all for our talk. You can follow us on Twitter. Thank you for your listening. <laughs>